Um, so first I would like to, to acknowledge my co-authors and the speed uh, presently at Denmark University for the, the experiments and the knowledge sense of the did the FE implementation and simulations. So uh, I would, would like to talk about uh, structured tapes or pressure sensitive adhesives and perhaps convince you that these materials can be used for, for more severe applications that perhaps have been done before and also walk you through a methodology to extract data from the lab and all the way to, to the computer simulations. So the motivation is of course that, that uh, we are uh, having severe problems to, to make things lighter, given a smaller carbon footprint, uh, and a possibility is to lower the weight by using mixed materials and combine uh, composites with more traditional methods to make the, the most optimal solutions. So what, what is the problem with the mixed material joint? Well, basically it's the, the difference in thermal expansion coefficients. If you uh, put, for instance, as in this example, uh, a one millimeter long uh, steel carbon fiber reinforced plastic and change the temperature with 50 degrees. Now, if you use an ordinary adhesive you, for the car industry, you, you would harden this at uh, 180 degrees and uh, you go down to room temperature and everything will be curved. It will, you will have an enormous thermal distortion and if you have a stiff joint, you may get fracture in the joint directly. So this is not tolerable. So, so the, this is the problem. Now, a structural tape uh, can we stand typically of the order of 1,000% engineering strain before it fractures. It's enormously tough. And it's much softer than it is. So the stresses are much smaller. And the stiffness is much smaller. So the thermal distortion will be much smaller and the stresses in the joint will be much smaller by the thermal things. But the stresses are small, so, so will they actually be able to withstand any load? That's the question. But the toughness is not. So the outline of our presentation is to show uh, the way from measurements in the lab to implementation in, with, in, as a user material in the abacus in this example, and to simulations on the structure more or less structural level. The tape we are looking at is a 3M acrylic foam tape with a 1.1 mm thickness. So let's just start with, with the model. From linear elasticity we can do uh, asymptotic analysis and this has been done a lot. These are some results from a friend in Sweden. And what it boils down to, when, when you consider that the metals are much, much stiffer than, than the adhesive, or in this case the tape, is that it's two deformation modes that dominates completely. And that is the peel deformation, where you separate in as a mode of one, separation in fracture mechanics, and the shear deformation. Those two dominate, and you have stiffnesses that are dependent on, on Jones Model Surpassage ratio. The, adhesive in this way, and this is because if you separate and everything around is much stiffer, you get uniaxial strain, not uniaxial strain. You get much higher stiffness. Now, what we prefer to call the cohesive layer model, in inelasticity, uh, you could imagine that you have the start of an adhesive layer at this point, you have certain energy uh, work performed by, by the stresses on the strains and you get the energy captured in that little part here. Now that, that energy is what, what is released if you, if you fracture the, the joint, so that, that is, could be called the energy release rate. And if uh, the separations increase monotonically, these 
often forms a central potential, so they work as a potential. In that case, uh, the J taken as the energy release rate, if you take C, the integration path just close to the crack tip. So this is J will be the energy release rate in that case. Now if, if the strain energy density is not explicitly dependent on the x coordinate, then we can choose C arbitrarily, and in that case we can develop experimental methods to measure J directly. So uh, this is the, the typical specimen configuration that we have been working with a lot, the DCB specimen. And if you take the integration path in different ways around the crack tip, you get uh, from the loads this expression, the force, the rotation at the loading points divided by the width of the, the adhesive layer. And if you take an alternative integration path around the, the, the crack tip and assume that J is path independent, uh, then you get this expression and they should be equal. And then you can differentiate and you get the cohesive law for monotonically increasing separation. So the experiments in mode one loading like this gives you a J increasing with the separation. Uh, remember the, the, the thickness of the layer, so the, these are really, really large strings in, in the adhesive. This is W, the separation. And the energy is about 2,000 U per square meter. And that, that is about the numbers you get for a good adhesive. But the stresses, they are really small. Just half a megapascal. So, you have to be careful if you use this in, in a submarine or out in space, you have to take care. Uh, air pressure is actually uh, of the similar size. So in mo mode 3, in shear, we use the, this uh, uh, specimen configuration where we load the, the tape through an unevenly um, with a um, loading the U-beams through the shear center, so they just shear the, the tape. And now you can use exactly the same formulas and everything, but now it's the shear uh, relation you get. So you get a, a J increasing up to about the same value as in, in mode 1, and about the, the, oh, it should be tau here. Sorry about that. This is shear stress increasing to also a, a fairly large, but the shape is very different, the shear than in here. Now, to implement this, we, we could have done this directly with the model in Abacus, but the uh, Abacus model is a black box. We don't know really what was happening in Abacus user, in Abacus uh, cohesive elements. So we implemented Young and Coles mixed mode model. And these are all the equations. But essentially what it means is that in peel loading, you plug in your data from, from the peel experiment. In shear loading, you plug in your shear model, and they act independently of each other. But at the end, when you have reached D equal to 1, it, it fractures. So it's simple, it hasn't been verified for, uh, for mixed mode loading for this tape. Uh, Michael Toles has used it a lot in his work on adhesives. So the first uh, load case is a thermal loading, 60 degrees centigrade, change in temperature, on a specimen uh, typically used by the automotive industry to, to study joints. Now in the mixed material, we have a steel plate, we have an aluminum hat profile, and we uh, load it just by the temperature. And the, the transverse vertical direction is space materials. 0.07 millimeters. I have no idea if the car industry finds that tolerable or not. 
it seems that, that what, what they are doing today is that they have a, some way of subjective uh, analysis of, of, of joints to see if they are good or not. They haven't put numbers on it, as far as I know. Uh, but it's, yeah, 70 micrometers. Uh, the deformation of the tape is a maximum of 0.18 millimeter, and it's shear, of course, in the tape. And for this uh, tape, you, you need 6 millimeter for fracture. So it's all elastic, no non-elastic. <laughs> the mechanical load is different. Now, now we put a, a force. Uh, prescribed displacement at the center, and what we find is uh, that the load is limited by plasticity of, of the metals. No sign of fracture in in the tape. So by this way, it seems that, that tapes could be useful for uh, for this type of application. So of course, there is much more work to be done before you can uh, convince the people about this. So, I hope I'll demonstrate the method to go from the lab to the computer using these quiz day models, the model they the, the tape, use the j method to measure quiz and loss, using uh, an existing cohesive model for mixed mode loading that interpolate between mode 1 and 2 loading. It's fairly straightforward, well it's a straightforward implementation as a human in our course. Um, you need to do all this partial differential uh, derivatives to get the tangent stiffness matrix and well, you, you can use a symbolic toolbox in MATLAB to do that. Uh, it's numerically stable. Now, this this is not my cohesive uh, mixed mode model, but we we didn't need any numerical stabilization or damping or anything. It just run through, so it seems quite stable and nice model. So these tapes, I hope, can be proven to show a potential to to be useful for this type of application. Toughness is really high and uh, it has an ability to, to uh, minimize these thermal mismatch problems. But of course, I, I didn't claim that we, we have validated this experimentally on, on the structure. So, thank you.